Cheers. This is to all the men I've tolerated before with your hosts, Natalie Katona and Dina Alcatib. If you're new to the podcast, this is a podcast where Dina and I take all of the activities where we've, um, I almost said entertained and the word is interacted. Y'all, we struggling today. (laughs) It is. It's a hard day, y'all. It's a hard day. Dina and I are both on our menstruations. <laughs> well, I'm like pre, like I'm pre menstruation, oh. which is the worst time for me. Like during, I'm fine, I'm chill, like everything's cool. But the week before, I'm like a heathen of every sort. No, y'all, I'm in it. I'm in it. <laughs> I'll be in I, it next week or this I week. Actually, like, a few days. I feel like I am 18 months pregnant. And honestly, I could just pass away. <laughs> Ready for death. Sweet, sweet death. Also, Ouch. there was there was a stupid time change this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So it would typically be 11 or how's that right. work? Yeah, yeah, we sprung forward. Oh. It's fall back, spring forward. Why haven't we outlawed the time changes yet? Hot take. <laughs> I don't know. Farmers farm everything all the time, so I don't get it. Isn't that the point of it? I don't get it. It's farmers. Yeah. Also, we have electricity now, so get lights. (laughs) Yeah, get lights. Exactly. What year is it? You can play football at dark. You can farm at dark. At dark. That's not. In the dark. Man, we are just... At... Woo! So anyways... newcomers (laughs) newcomers <laughs> if you're new this is where dina and i talk about all the ways that we have tolerated men today's episode is going to be fun because instead of talking about men that we know we're going to be talking about movies dina i don't know if they're from your youth but these are movies from my youth that weren't supposed to be thirst traps and yet mm. i was turned on anyways <laughs> i don't i don't know I, not not like young young for me not young young younger ish no these are the movies that i truly believe set me on a path to have to tolerate certain behaviors from men because this is media that i consumed at a young age and then felt things in my bathing suit parts and then went those are the type of men i'll love <laughs> oh boy i'm excited i i would like to preface this episode that i had to explain to dina what i meant for this concept because she's like what do you mean movies that make you horny that aren't supposed to make you horny and i was like well you know like there are movies that are designed to make us horny like magic mike i got way hornier during hustlers um yeah Fifty Shades of Grey. Those are thirst trap movies. I was like, but then there are movies where in the middle of it, you're like, why am I turned on? <laughs> right. That's true. It not just wrong. shouldn't be. That wasn't the purpose of the film. <laughs> that's not That's not an Oscar that's category. True. So It should be. All right. Do you want to do this like we did our cheat sheet episode where I do a movie and then you do a movie? And we yeah, let's do that. Movie? How many do All you right. have? I have. I wrote down four official movies. I think I also have four. Oh, that worked out well. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to start. Um, so my thirst trap movies fall into two categories. Weird fantasy movies my dad had me watch as a kid, and Sad Sack Guys. (laughs) All right, all right. So the first one, and I believe the more prevalent movie where I've been turned on consistently, is Labyrinth. Oh, what a classic. (laughs) classic. How could you not? His genitalia is everywhere. That's right. That's one of my points. Like, why am I turned on about Labyrinth? Um, Let's talk about David Bowie's wig and guy liner. Okay. Also, he does that thing with the balls. Also, he's playing with balls. He's literally playing with balls, like, the whole time. 
Like, expertly, too. Expertly. Just staring into your soul, being like, are you a little turned on? And I'm like, a little. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of. <laughs> also, the whole purpose of Labyrinth is that that woman is dissatisfied with her family, and I can relate, and then he comes and takes her away from them. <laughs> and I'm like, that's <laughs> all I've ever wanted. Yeah, I just want a man all waiting. an owl to fly into my window, take this baby, I don't like babies, take him. She spoke a problem and he found a solution. And that's what I'm Love looking that. for in a man. Love that. Also, so Labyrinth was made with Jim Henson puppets. And I need you to know that very recently, a man on a dating app asked me who the sexiest Muppet is. And I had to, like, think. <laughs> I don't even know the names of Muppets. Oh, I that's think. A- I love the Muppets. And then like Wait, is every- Kermit a Muppet? Kermit the Frog was a Muppet. He just made okay. a giant comeback on the Masked Saner, my favorite show. <laughs> I don't know. I love everything about Labyrinth. I think that Dance Magic Dance song is so hot. You oh, remind me of the babe. What babe? The babe with the power. I am a babe with the power. He's not Honestly, singing about that yeah. baby. He he's singing about me <laughs> and my <That's> power. Right. <laughs> <Isn't> there- <laughs> Just imagining yourself in his hands, <laughs> singing to you. He, he's throwing You're me You're the babe with the power. He's throwing me up into the air, <laughs> up and down, <laughs> as goblins dance. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I tried to perform Dance Magic Dance as a karaoke song one time. It does not translate to karaoke. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a train wreck. It was a train wreck. Thank you. But for honestly, what were, what were they thinking when they picked his wardrobe? Like, because I wonder if David penis. Bowie asked for his dick to just be presented the entire movie. Like, you can't not look at it. Like, it's right. just there. It may or may not have been the first penis that I had ever seen because I feel like you see the entire shape of it. <laughs> You really kind of do. And I saw the movie late. I only saw it a few years ago, so... I No, I used to watch it every day. My sister and I had to go to summer school around our, like, fourth grade year of school. Like, I, she was in third grade, I was in fourth grade. My mom didn't want to deal with us, so she made us go to summer school. <laughs> and we were too lazy to walk all the way home. So we would stop at a friend's house and he would just have like Labyrinth queued up. He's like, you guys want to watch Labyrinth? We watch Labyrinth every day. Oh my God. You're yeah. like brainwashed by the penis. <laughs> and ever the thing about Labyrinth that cracks me up is everyone thinks that it's about her first period. And I'm like, no, it's about her first orgasm. And here's why. And you know, in the like, in the little glass ball scene where they're like, she's dancing in that they're gorgeous dancing, white yeah. dress. And he's singing, yeah. within you. I think when she sh- like smashes through the glass, that's her orgasming. Maybe oh, I orgasm during that again. part. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you had enough material, I feel like. I did. So, Labyrinth. Labyrinth set me up sexually. Very that seems kind of normal, I feel like. Is it normal? People look at me when I say things like that. Really? And they're like, Maybe I'm a weirdo. I am a weirdo. All right, so my first one is, I mean, I don't think anybody is literally going to be shocked. Like, it's Lord of the Rings. So, <laughs> we got a couple men in this movie. That we can talk about. We can talk about Aragorn, which is... The only man I want to talk about. Exactly. So he... But, like, when you actually look at Aragorn, especially in the early films, he basically... I mean, he's rugged, right? He's dirty. Yeah. He's rugged. He got that messy, like, beard. We love that. We love some... He's smoking that some pipe the, in the corner. He's smoking the fucking pipe fuck. in, uh, like, all cool. And he, he hot, all right? But also, he has no drive. The motherfucker was supposed to be king. And then he was like, nah, I'm too scared of that. But he was like, oh, you're just gonna ignore your duties? You got no ambition? You're done? Eventually he's done. I mean... So I guess I'm attracted to men that have no ambition. 
<laughs> until too late in life. And then Adult it's men like. Adult who refuse to live up to their potential. <laughs> it's like awful. And then you got Boromir, who uh, is a. There's he's nothing okay. attractive about Boromir. <laughs> really? No, he's a, he's a sad sack. Like the act. Well, Shandy. Faramir is a sad sack. Right. Faramir is worse than Boromir, I think. Okay, in that well, they're, regard. they're the sad sack they're brothers. They're both true. true. Um, Boromir, Sean Bean, very attractive. I would ride Sean Bean all night long, especially in Game of Thrones when, he, like, right before he gets beheaded, I'm like, I can't wait to watch an entire series with him. Then he's beheaded. <laughs> so, yeah. but Boromir. No, he, he's the guy that comes to the party. He comes to the fellowship and he's like, what if I just talk about how sad I am all the time? One cannot just walk into Mordor. This now, is going to be bad. <laughs> we have to say that, that they're in the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings, there's a scene where you get to see Boromir like before he leaves for the fellowship and he's like riling he's there with Faramir here he's like riling up all of you know everybody at Minas Tirith and they're like he's like for Gondor it's like epic this epicness so I liked him in that flashback before he was like a dick who betrayed the fellowship you know He's he did redeem himself in the end. He was emotionally abused by his father, and he used that as a platform to emotionally abuse me during the fellowship of the rain. <laughs> You're not wrong. Also, Faramir is, like, just a kicked puppy that you just want to, like, hug, because you're like, poor pa- Faramir, like, you just want to save him from his dick dad, and, like, he tries so hard, but he just a, f- just, just a footstool, then, basically. Like, he, he just gets walked all over, man. And then Eowyn, like, he fails at trying to, like, seduce Aragorn away from Liv Tyler, so she's oh, like, God, I guess man. I'll... I guess I'll just marry Faramir. Like, he's here. <laughs> also, I didn't like Carl Urban that much the way he looked in Lord of the Rings, but I really like Carl Urban. Like, oh, yeah. a lot. Carl Urban's hot. He is hot. Especially in other movies. I, he's okay, I feel like, in Lord of the Rings. Like, with his... Uh, but in Lord of the Rings, there weren't that many, like, females that I found in charge of. Like, oh, they're all too dainty. They're yeah. all too dainty in Lord of the Rings. I, however... When Kate Blanchett goes from like soft spoken Galadriel, like oh I'm yeah, just a classy lady, and then she comes to, and then she becomes a Dementor, and she oh, tries God. to suck out Frodo's soul. I was like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> okay, ooh. hold on a second, hold on. Um, but yeah, Aragorn definitely was the the main, and and he definitely as the movie progresses, and he actually moves into his role as the king he's like pretty good hot take i don't give a fuck about legolas yeah i don't either i don't he's so he looks so young like honestly he's he's so young in that i'm like not a vibe he's got a bad wig here i have a theory about orlando bloom let's hear it i will never be attracted to orlando bloom because they just have him be the sidekick of a more attractive character so in Lord of the Rings, like, maybe I would have looked at Orlando Bloom, but then there was Viggo Mortensen. Right. In Pirates of the Caribbean, this is going to be prob- problematic as fuck, but we were all young one time, <laughs> and we all didn't know things. I could have been attracted to Orlando Bloom in Pirates of the Caribbean, but Johnny Depp wore Johnny guyliner, Depp. and as we discussed in Labyrinth, I like guyliner. <laughs> I agree. I agree with Troy, you. Troy, you had Orlando Bloom up against Brad Pitt waking up from a threesome. Oh. <laughs> and then who else was in Eric Bana? Fucking love Eric Bana. So like Orlando Bloom just has never done it for me because there's always been someone to distract me. Who's just like manlier and more rugged. Yeah. So that's me. First one. Lord All right. I mean, we're going to go three for three on weird fantasy movies. I cried when I found out it was like peak quarantine. And I cried when I logged on to Disney Plus and found out that Willow was on Disney Plus. Have you seen Willow? I don't think I have. Okay. So Willow, hot take. Star Wars is great. It's a wonderful franchise. It has often taken my money. Mm -hmm. However... 
George Lucas made this fantasy movie called Willow about these like little tiny people who had to like take a baby <laughs> and mm. get her away from some bad people. Mm. And Dina, the fir- and Belle Kilmer plays this guy named like Mad Mortigan or something. I always say his name. Yeah. Wrong. And the first time you see Val Kilmer, he's like real strainy and beat up and like sweaty looking. Yeah. And he's and he's in this metal cage hanging up from a tree. <laughs> and I'm just like, who? Who? Who is that dirty scoundrel of a man? <laughs> and. And then Val Kilmer, like, grins and smirks at key parts in this movie because he's not a good guy. Like, he basically just, like, ends up on this journey because Willow gets him out of the cage and then he wants to fuck a redhead. So he's like, well, I guess I give a shit about this baby now. (laughs) So, like, he's not a good guy, but he smirks. And I'm like, Val Kilmer, you quit it. And I would watch anything with Val Kilmer in it, The Saint... (laughs) You're right. And, like, I have such a hard-on for young, dirty, in a cage, just nasty Val Kilmer, like a scoundrel with a heart of gold. Why are we attracted to the dirty men? To the dir- the ones that look like they just literally rolled around in the dirt? I don't know. I think it's because, like, we don't see that very often. And when we do yeah, oh, see yeah. it, it's in the... It's in a very Midwest fashion where it's like some guy who's shirtless in overalls. And I'm like, that's not what I'm looking for. Wow, where's, where's your, your sword? armor? Yeah, where's your fight, sword? Like, <laughs> get your sword. Fight a troll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My yeah. sister always tells my brother-in-law, she's like, Manly and I only like dirty, dirty men. And you, and then like my sister will be like, you know, he has soft hands. Like talking about her. <laughs> Got them I mean, I think it's also because we are very strong personalities. Yeah. Um, and so it's hard to find someone who will be more alpha than us, if that makes sense. So Right. I I truly need a warrior. I, for whatever reason, like, my brokenness comes out because I want, like, Val Kilmer and this redhead, they fight the entire movie. And I'm like, that's what I want. I want someone to fight me. <laughs> God damn, we just want toxic ass people. We just want uh, it's not good. It's not looking good, guys. No, it's not good. I'm actively in counseling trying to trying to fight it. Work against that, yeah. And then you forget that like all because most of these movies came out in the eighties that I'm going to be Uh, referring to. So these people are old as fuck now. Like you and I went and saw a movie that Bill Kilmer was in it, and you actively Googled what had happened to him in the middle. Oh of the my movie. God! Do not <laughs> see the snowman, guys. I don't know. That was a train wreck. I was so angry that whole movie. It was a that three was... hour train wreck. <laughs> I was just like, wow. I look over at Dina, and she's actively Googling what what has happened to Bill Kilmer. <laughs> I needed to know at that moment because it was very bad. Like, he looked bad. He didn't have the right voice, so it sounded bad. I was like, what is going on? He had had, like, throat surgery, and they still decided that it was a good idea to honor his contract. (laughs) Oh, my God. That was such... It was so bad. It was so bad. All right, what's your next one? Okay, so my next one kind of goes with Lord of the Rings because it's The Hobbit. But we have to talk about it because there are different people. So, Philly and Killy, of course, the of hot course. dwarves. I would let them double team me. <laughs> oh my god, my fantasy. Which I feel like, honestly, of the of everybody in, in the Tolkien-like universe, they're very, like... They're very good matches, I feel like, because yes. they're fun. They're like yeah. they don't have many, like they don't have that many issues. They're loyal. They're like you know good good men. I feel like so. And you know what? I would have fucked Pippin in the Lord of the Rings. I would get my Hobbit Dude, on. Honestly, like honestly. they're kind of cute too. As I fuck, you know what? I fuck Gimli too. He has big dick energy. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> um. So Philly and Killy, of course, adorable. 
Um, Tariel, though, in this one was so hot. Like, I would choose her over Legolas in a minute. But I will say, Legolas in The Hobbit ver- is better than Legolas in Lord of the Rings. Like, he's more mean. And I think that's why I liked him. I was like, oh, shit, he mean now. I was yeah. like, why is this so... Remind he, me like, who Tariel is. She's it's... the female elf that that likes the what... um, one of the they dwarves. Like her. Because I got, you know, like, I got beef with her from Lost. She was Kate in Lost. Oh, so really? every time she's in a movie, I'm like... Oh, you don't like her. I but I liked her. how that she, like, was sassy and also could fight and stuff. Yeah. Um. So I vibed with her more than any of the female characters in Lord of the Rings. So... Um, but Philly and Killy, my god, you're right. They could double team me any day. Any, any day. Any fucking day. Any day. Tomorrow. Also, I thought it was cute that a dwarf liked, you know, obviously an elf. And the the, the size the difference Hobbit, there. Dwarves. Like... <laughs> oh, no, in The Hobbit, they are dwarves. Okay. They are dwarves, yeah. What are you doing? I, I tried to correct. Question my knowledge. And be like, they're not dwarves, they're hobbits. No, in The Hobbit, they are, like, the majority they're of dwarves. people are dwarves. Dwarves, yeah. I'm sorry. So, and I don't, I don't like the main dwarf, or Thorin. Like, eh. oh, I do. Thorin. Yeah, I mean, he's okay, okay for me. You like him? Listen, he, he dirty and he angry he and he dirty. grumpy, and that's my type. <laughs> True. True. You're not wrong. You're, I'm not. <laughs> I swear, guys, not all these, not all my movies are gonna be Tolkien related, but they will but they all be fantasy. Be. <laughs> they should be, but it's, they're my favorite movie, so, you know. Okay, good. The Hobbit. Wait, you didn't even talk about my ultimate fir- thirst trap in The Hobbit, Wait, which is Lee no. Pace as that, like, bougie-ass elf who rides the steed everywhere. Oh my god, I forgot about him, to be honest with you. Damn, he is a whole fucking mood. He's, like, the feminine male yeah. in the movie, and I love that. I would I love, love for him energy. to be my daddy. <laughs> mood. Honestly, mood. When he does that thing with the the dragon face where he's yeah. like, I have felt the fires of the north or whatever the hell he says. Ooh, it turns me on because he kind of like, I don't know, he like moan groans as yeah, that happens. Do you remember this, that scene? This is what turns me on about him. Like he's on his giant like stag. Elk it's thing, like that yeah. giant elk mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> yeah. And some like little elf henchmen come up and they're like, "My lord, my do we really lord. need to ride into battle?" And he's like, "They took my great grandfather's bracelet. Be gone into the battle." <laughs> and I'm like, "Fuck!" Like yeah. he's going to war over some jewels. Like, like motherfucker he's so just wants his petty. necklace. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants his fucking necklace. Like, damn. Also, dragons have a sexy energy because they too- Okay. Do did you not want to talk about how sexy Smog is? I almost did. I almost wrote down Smog. Only because I love Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, we all do. And I find him so attractive. I find all the weird looking people attractive. But like, his voice in that- uh, yeah. Oh, like, can I find the dragon's voice sexy? Like, because I do. <laughs> like, I do. <laughs> I find all of dragons' um, lifestyles sexy. Like, all dragons want to do is collect a bunch of pretties, put them in a pile, and then take a nap. (laughs) Yeah, and, like, bite and eat people who show up. Who wake them up. Don't you wake me up. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, I will burn down your entire village. Did you just try to wake me up? (laughs) Yeah, and when he's, like... When he's talking to Bilbo, and he's like, Barrel Rider, with that, like, voice of just deepness. I'm like, hold on. Hold on. This is making me feel weird. In men places. we should men we should have been um, attracted to in the Lord of the Rings franchise, Samwise Gamgee. He's the only one who yep. married us and treated us okay. And at, no point, and at no point was I turned on by Samwise Gamgee. Gamgee. Or Frodo. Not, not a fan oh, of Frodo fuck either. Frodo. God. No one wants Frodo or Sam. Like, nope. I would let Sam take me to dinner, but I couldn't spend an hour with Frodo. They look like they'd be clingy. Yeah. Ugh, I'd rather fuck the me. dragon. <laughs> rather fuck the dragon? <laughs> I'd rather, God damn it. 
I'd rather What's touch wrong the ball with the us? <laughs> the ball rug's got energy. <laughs> also, like, every once in a while, I get turned on during the Gandalf and the Saruman scene where they're fighting. I'm like, oh. Hold on, Gandalf got moves. I like I just like watching men throw other men against walls. <laughs> oh yeah. Testosterone. Yeah. Alright. Right, what's your next one? So my next one is a theme. It's honestly just a person. And it's any movie that Tim Curry is in. <laughs> you know what? Like I watched um uh Rocky Horror. Oh. And I was yes. like, wait, why is he turning me on? Like he actually turned me on in that movie. I was like, what? So I grew up in the Midwest, so watching Rocky Horror Picture Show in high school was, like, the first, like, taboo sexuality thing that I had ever, like, witnessed. And I'm like, yeah, with the corset and the dark lipstick and him, like, just growing his own fuck boy. And then everyone has group sex at some point. Don't feel it. Just be it. Fuck Yeah. Everything also about the, Rocky Horror yeah. shows. Yeah. Susan Sarandon just like in her bra the entire time. So hot. It's so hot. And like whenever he whenever he makes the, the, the fuck boy or whatever and he's like he's like loses his mind chasing him, I was like, yeah. why is that turning me on? Like why is why is it all hot? Susan Sarandon singing to 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 touch me because she's never come before and like oh Rocky's the the one thing between her and an orgasm. Yeah. Damn. Also that guy on the, who comes in on the bike or whatever, what's his name? Meatloaf. His oh, name like, I Eddie. like that energy. His name is Eddie in the movie, but like my mom had me grow up listening to Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell album. So <laughs> also a huge nerd moment for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, And then... Not only Rocky Horror Picture Show, but before Rocky Horror Picture Show, um, Tim Curry was in Legend, which is an old Tom Cruise movie where he, like, fucks someone in front of a unicorn. And then yeah. Tim Curry gets to take his girlfriend down to hell. And then she, like, gets oh, all I've dressed in black this. and, like, maybe leather or whatever. So he's, like, the devil, Dina. <gasps> and, like, well, okay, well, I need to see that. lips all the time. It's another movie about, like, your sexual awakening. But, like, we can only talk about sexual awakening in the 80s through, like, unicorns and the devil. So, like, yeah. she's all, like, sexually awakened right now. And, like, Tom Cruise is, like, her pure boyfriend or whatever. He sucks. <laughs> I would have <laughs> stayed in hell with Tim Curry as the devil. Yeah. He has like a smog voice the entire time. Ooh, He's always sneering. He's also Love wearing them. black lipstick in that movie. Love. You Have you seen him in Three Musketeers? Yes. He's like the corrupt like bishop or whatever or priest. I don't know. Yeah. But he's and he wears like all red. And I'm like, hold on. Why is he sexy? I want to show you a picture of Tim Curry as the devil live on this oh, podcast. Oh, yeah, let me see it. <laughs> we will definitely have to make collages of our men. Look at this, Dean. <laughs> oh, shit. Yo, his horns are out of this world. Yeah. He's so. One time I was at Gen Con, I was at a gaming convention, and someone was dressed as Tim Curry as the, as the devil in legend and i could not contain myself okay you you know how i feel about horns those horns are amazing look he's constantly making this face look at that he's chin. like you are beneath look, me face here's bitch ass tom cruise no one gives a fuck about you tom cruise. yeah i literally don't care no one gives a fuck damn no that's one. epic i gotta watch that that's, that's you need awesome. to watch it it like it doesn't hold up as a very interesting movie for myself anymore, but I can't wait for you to watch it. And then there's Tim Curry as either Lon John Silvers or Blackbeard in Muppet Treasure Island. Because I have a thing for pirates. <laughs> I love that. So I anything that. with Tim Curry, anything with Tim Curry, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to be turned on for the next hour and a half. What a mood. Honestly, he's a sexy person. He is a sexy person. He's got that voice. You want to know? All right, so my this is a good segue. You know who else is a sexy person? And may oh. he rest in peace. Motherfucking Heath Ledger. 
Uh. And Heath, Heath Ledger specifically in anything, but specifically in A Knight's Tale. I'm going to cry. Number one, I qualify that movie as a thirst trap movie. Was it not supposed to be a thirst trap movie? I'm not sure. So I wasn't sure about this one because it's not like, you know, it has a romantic sense to it, but it's not like about that, you know. It's not like Magic Mike level, so I'm I'm counting it. But he yeah, yeah. I got a thing for for people with like job structures, like Eddie Redmayne, Benedict Cumberbatch, like he Ledger, yeah. all of them. And in that one, he's clean cut for the most part. And um, I love him. Yeah, that he smile! Oh my god, he smiles and he like winks at one point in that movie, and I'm like, oh my god. And you know what? Again, not a great role model because. No. He lies. He, for like, all his friends he? basically have to help him write a love letter because he can't even do it on his own. Like, right. he's so bad at it. Um, so, but, but goddamn. And also, what's the guy who plays Vision? What's that? Actor Paul name? Bettany. And we get yes, to see and his he, ass. You get to see his butt in that movie. And I I think he's like clever. I think he's kind of cute in that movie yeah, too. And I would he, fuck Paul Bettany. Right? right? I would That's not fuck. Oh wait, you haven't seen WandaVision yet, so I'm gonna pull, retract my statement, and we will go back to that. There is a version of Paul Bettany that I would not fuck. <laughs> but. Okay. But yeah, I I think he, I just love Heath Ledger. He's got that he's might- got one of those faces when he smiles or winks or just like gives you a look. You're just like your ovaries and your vagina just fucking respond to that shit, dude. What about another um problematic relationship movie? 10 Things I Hate About You. Have you not seen 10 Things I Hate About You? I f- feel like and, I might have actually. And Julia Stiles and like I'm not going to remember her name, but Alex, Ma- the girl who played Alex Mack or Alec Mack and then Ga- Gabrielle Union and Joseph Gordon Lovett, they're all in it. And he sings and like Julia Stiles is mad at him. So to manipulate her, he like pays off the school band and he sings, you're just too good to be true. Oh, that's right. And take my eyes off of you. Which, like, are romantic gestures romantic, or are they just manipulation tactics? I'll never know. <laughs> but damn, he could talk about farts, and I would be like, I would just... I'm not I'm not a big, like, looker, looks person, but that motherfucker no. could do anything, and I would be melting. And A Night's Tale, like, pr- truly has it all for a turn me on movie like he's pretty but he's also dirty every once in a while yeah there's a dance scene to a david bowie song there's jousting the secret prince is also very hot he usually (sighs) doesn't play good guys in movies but he's very hot he the villain night is also very hot there's all this like masculine energy just being shouted at so much so much masculine energy in that movie it's so good it's so god now i want to watch it i might watch it later i think i think it's streaming could be it might be on i have it on blu-ray oh fuck yeah dude it's one of my favorite movies like it's one of my favorite soundtracks like i will just it's such a good soundtrack i know people hate it because they're like it's not it's not like in the time or whatever. We're like, but that's the point. Like that's the point of of the the soundtrack. Like when he just like punches his arms up during golden years, I'm like, oh, ah. like, like, oh my god, you're right. Guys. Yes, when he does that move and he's like so into it. Ooh, I cut my nose trying to do it. Like I. Scratched. Oh, and also when the villain gets so mad in that scene, what I don't know the actor's name, but when he gets mad in that scene, he walks out like with literal rage in his eyes you were like oh my god you know he's gonna have good sex like you know in that moment he fuck you up in the bedroom rest in peace Heath Ledger for real like that was probably the one like act actor death that has affected me like I was like whoa Whoa. I really liked him I cussed out an entire table of people who were trying to tell me that it was true and I think this was like before I either had a smartphone or knew to just or maybe I googled it right in front of them and I was like fuck you that didn't happen why would you even tell me that and then I just like 
laid my head down on the cafeteria table and wept. (laughs) Like, that was emotional, man. It was bad. It was a bad time. And I, like, every once in a while, Michelle Williams will post something. And I'm just, like, so happy and so sad for her at the same time that I will just weep. (laughs) Yeah. Ugh. All right. My last one is a movie that no one's heard of, but it is currently streaming on HBO Max, and I almost did cry. It's called Untamed Heart. (laughs) Hmm, okay. And it has one of my huge crushes, Marissa Tomei. I love Marissa Tomei. I want to go out to dinner with Marissa Tomei so much. She's funny. She's gorgeous. She seems to be kind. She's, um... In the new spider man she's Aunt May. Oh, yeah. She is very pretty. Yeah. But she's, like, ballsy, yeah. too. Like, I just love she Marissa is. Tomei. And then my number one boo, Christian Slater. <laughs> because All right. my dad called me last Easter, and he's like, what are you doing during quarantine Easter? And I was like, number one, I don't celebrate Easter. Number two, I'm watching Heathers on a loop all day because I want to be turned on by Christian Slater today. And this is the Christian Slater movie I can find. Love that. So Untamed Heart is the movie. Marissa Tomei is like a... Oh, and Rosie Perez. She's so funny. She's in this movie too. So Marissa Tomei is a waitress at a diner and she has to work late nights. And Christian Slater is like the socially awkward recluse dish boy (laughs) in the movie. And he's, like, weird. Like, they make him, like, all hunched over all the time. Like, he's the Quasimodo of the diner. Yeah. And, like, no one talks to him, but Marissa Tomei is always, like, nice to him or whatever. So, he, what she doesn't know is she walks home late at night from the diner most nights. And he follows her in the shadows to make sure that she gets home okay. Look at your face. He follows her. So we like stalkers now. Yeah. Wow. Listen, childhood Dadley thought that it would be so romantic for a boy to like follow you home to make sure that you got home safe, but didn't want credit for it. (laughs) Like, I see why. Like, I see what you're doing. Like, he's doing it without being asked, with no ulterior motive. Like, I understand what you're saying. But again, you are following someone. (laughs) He is still a stalker. Because he... So, one night at the diner, these guys are at her table, and they're, like, huge Mm -hmm. creeps or whatever. And so, on the way home, they try to assault her, and he beats them all up. So okay, but this that. is this is like Twilight vibes when Edward shows up and she's about to get like whatever by those dudes. He shows up in the car and it's like stalker vibes, like right. literally I stalker vibes. And it di- so when I read all of the Twilight books, they tricked me into thinking that that's what romance was, and then I watched it play out and I was like, oh, this isn't cool. <laughs> like Bella needs to call yeah, a hotline. <laughs> also, I think that one it quali- I think Twilight qualifies as a thirst trap. It's movie. a teenage thirst trap. Yeah, I agree. So, anyways, Christian Slater beats up like these guys who try to attack her or whatever. So, to I guess reward him for his valentry, he she dates him. <laughs> And no one at the diner can, like, figure out why she's dating him. She, they're like, why are you dating <laughs> the weirdo dish guy? <laughs> like, and she's like, he's just really sweet and he's misunderstood. And what you eventually find out is that he's an orphan. <laughs> he was an orphan. And he was raised by nuns. And he has this, like, heart disease. And his heart is too big for his chest cavity or something. So... So a nun, again, this is going to tie in to, like, how weirdly obsessed I am with, like, gorillas in the primate kingdom. (laughs) So the nuns tell him that um, when he was young, his heart wasn't working. So a baboon king gave him his heart through some, like, magic bullshit. What the fuck is the story? Like, there's (laughs) so many things going on here. And he tells Marissa Tobey that he has a baboon king heart. (laughs) And she still dates him. 
and takes his virginity. <laughs> and then all he's wanted, Dina, is to go to a hockey game. So she takes him to a hockey game. And then he dies in the parking lot. <laughs> Wait, after the hockey game? After the hockey game, he falls asleep on the ride home or something. And he's and he dead. dead. And he's dead. Damn. I this love, is a roller coaster. I love movies where the guy that you fall in love with dies at the <laughs> end. And you have okay. to just like carry that for the rest of okay. your life. Okay, calm down, Natalie. Well, and I thought that this was a movie because, like, my mom, once there was a TV in my bedroom, my mom no longer monitored what I watched on TV ever. So oh, I would just okay. watch Untamed Heart and other movies that just, like, ran on cable. And my sister yeah. and I have, like, ones that we know that we watch, like, every day. Like, Great Balls of Fire, which is the Jerry Lee Lewis story. And, um... Quaid. Dennis Quaid plays Jerry Lee Lewis and Winona Ryder's in it. And I thought that this was like one of those movies. I thought this was like um, Avida or The Virgin Suicides or uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse that we was in our rotation. My sister has no memory of this movie. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, you know how I'm obsessed with Christian Slater? And she's like, no. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm literally? like, it's because of the Baboon Heart movie. And she's like, again, what the God. hell? What, <laughs> what is, this, is this movie? I'm going to have to watch this just to, like, see this craziness. Can we like, please watch it crazy. together? Like, I made you watch Yeah, the we can. Let's watch the Jim Curry movie and the whatever. Let's do movie nights. Let, we'll do a movie night. Um, can we? Yeah. Because remember when I made you watch The Color of Friendship? And you were like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> Dude, it was so racist. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is happening here? And it was a movie that was trying to combat racism by being racist. I was like, no, nah, this like, is supposed to teach us how to not be racist. And you're like, God. it missed the mark. <laughs> it's so cringy. I was like, what the fuck? All right. All right. That was an interesting one to end on for you. Yeah. I love you, Christian Slater. I still love you. <laughs> like... So my last one is actually an animated movie. Yes. Um, so Howl's Moving Castle is definitely, if you have not seen Howl's Moving Castle, it is a Studio Ghibli Miyazaki film. I think I've seen and it in your house. <laughs> yes. Howl is so hot in that movie they're like at the beginning of the movie how if you don't know the movie he's a wizard he is a wizard he does magic he shows up at, at um sophie's like comes to her aid basically there's these two creep soldiers another stalker situation basically there's these two creep soldiers that are, like, hitting on her in an alleyway. And she's, like, tries to leave and can't. Hal just, like, appears next to her, puts his arm around her with, like, his little cape jacket looking thing. And he's like, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Ooh, it's like, like that one guy that you never knew who he was in Pokemon. Remember the Pokemon mystery guy with the cape that was all Yes, basically. Guy? But you somehow knew he was hot. <laughs> yeah, and he's like got this blonde hair, long blonde hair. He's just like very attractive. And he flies, like basically flies with her out of there, teaches her to, to fly through the air. And when he drops her off at her location, he's like, you know, go in, go, go inside. Don't be like seen or whatever. And he's like, that's my girl. And he like jumps off the, the balcony. And I'm like, ooh. Like when he says, that's my girl, I'm like, I melt on the inside. Why do I inside. want a man to just kidnap me and put me in a castle? <laughs> that's what I'm fucking saying. And like, late, again, Howl is not a good role model because no. later in the movie, he, he is being summoned by the king of the the kingdom all wizards are being summoned and he's like too afraid to go like he's a little bitch and he sends sophie 
to uh, to to pretend to be his mother in his age. Like, yes, and it's like he's a little bitch. Like, he won't even go show up because he's scared, and so he makes Sophie go on his behalf. I'm like, what kind of man is that? That's not a good man. Also, she she rearranges. There's another scene where she rearranges his hair dye, his magical hair dye. His, his hair is bleach blonde, remind you. So she okay. cleans. She's cleaning his, his the, the castle, and she re he told her like don't don't get carried away now. Well, she gets carried away. She reorganizes the bathroom and all his magical hair dyes. He comes down in his bathroom in his towel, and he's screaming because his hair is now brown slash black, and he's like. Sophie, what have you done? I'm hideous. I'm ugly. I'm blah, blah, blah. And he, like, literally, Nally, Nally, we have to watch this movie together because the motherfucker melts into depression goo. He summons the forces of evil because his hair, because he thinks he's ugly. And Howl's moving castle. Yes, because he fucking, he, he melts into goo because he thinks he's ugly because his hair is no longer blonde. He's a child. He's literally a child. He's are we gonna Are we gonna do live reactions of you and I to these things? <laughs> we might need to. This shit is crazy. Like this is not who I should be attracted to in a film. But there's still what the way he dresses with those high waisted pants and the hair and the like. I'm gonna take care of you vibe. Like with the uh, I just liked it. Oh my gosh. I, well, I I almost did cartoons, but then I stopped because, like, I'm attracted to the Beast before he's Prince Adam in Beauty and the Beast. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does it make and sense? He can well, answer. Also, well, okay. <laughs> it makes sense for us. Also... I, yeah, I didn't want to bring up, like, beast creatures because I was like, people are gonna think I'm a furry and, like, I'm not, y'all. I just, like, we're it's a like voice weird. thing. It's just like a very we're just present. Weird. I have yeah. yet to date a man who presents himself the way that Aslan, the way that um, what's his name, the the guy from Take It, Liam Neeson, talks as the lion in the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> okay, it's Damn. the way he talks. That's true. You're not. Wrong. I have yet to I encounter a man. Who can present himself that way? I don't disagree. Right. And like, I, like, in Beauty and the Beast, he gives her a library. Like, he tries his best to heal himself. And he, like, talks it out with his bros, Lumiere and Cogsworth. And he's like, I just want to be better for Belle. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying. He's trying. <laughs> oh. Oh he God, takes a no. bath. Effort is basically what I'm getting at. I have yet to encounter men who will put forth effort. So. We're attracted to men who try even a little bit. Even a little bit. The bar and, is so low. And like every, so I find Gaston to be hilarious, and therefore yeah. because he's like, and then like people will tell you like it's not funny that Gaston believes the things that he does, and I'm like you right. And yet, my brokenness yeah, yeah. is making me laugh. <laughs> Listen, I would like to put in some honorable mentions for people like Loki. Loki? I fuck fucking yeah. think Loki is fucking hot as shit. You know Tom I'm a Tony Hilton. Stark girl. Love I love Tony Stark. Oh my god, Tony Stark. Yes, 100%. The There's attitude. a guy at Gen Con. I hope he's listening. Man at Gen Con who chooses to dress not like Iron Man, but as Tony Stark in like a really nice suit with the light up thing. I want to fuck you. I also want have, to fuck you yeah. every year that I've taken a picture with you. Uh also, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. He like, is. whenever you see him, like, in real life at Comic-Cons and stuff, that motherfucker is Tony Stark. His whole vibe. And here, and here is, um, because we don't know if cons are ever going to happen again, and I owe Robert Downey Jr. an apology because, again, I watched a lot of 80s movies as a child, so I only knew coked out, like, Tony Stark. Or Robert yeah. Downey Jr. So when he yeah. got hit for Iron Man, I was like, he ain't gonna do a good job. That man is a wreck. 
Tom. Yeah. He is a wreck. And then I watched it. And I was like, I owe that man an apology. Because there is no one that could do it the way so, he did it. Right. Someone take me to Comic Con because I need to shake that man's hand and tell him, I'm yeah. so sorry I doubted you. <laughs> yeah. Which I know people like simp for Thor, but like my dumbass wants like Loki and Iron Man and like the ones that are like cocky ass motherfuckers that need True. to just sit down. I don't give a fuck about Captain America because he makes you keep a yeah, I don't on. Get it. He's too good. He's too oh. good. Also, um, I'm going to drop this and I just want blanket acceptance. When they blended Mark Ruffalo with the Hulk and they made Professor Hulk smart Hulk, yes. I was like, hold on. I I'm agree. Li- I'm a little turned on. <laughs> yup. And I, and I bet you I'm going to be a little turned on by She-Hulk. <laughs> oh hell yeah she hulk is great i love she hulk so much oh and like God. drax has that attitude where like he clearly doesn't want to fuck with me so i will want to fuck with him yeah um what else are some honorable mentions um cartoon robin hood i'm gonna say it the fox robin hood from the cartoon oh. <laughs> yeah i like his vibe it's been too long i can't remember but i know who you're talking about also um Oh my god, it just left my brain. I was gonna say, uh, we were on the thing. Uh, oh, uh, Newt Scamander. Love his weird nerdiness. Who is He's that? He's probably one of the sane one. Newt Scamander from uh, Fantastic Beasts, Eddie Redmayne. I love Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> I would die for Eddie Redmayne. He, like, in that movie, he has everything that I want in a man. Like, he's nerdy, he's socially yeah. awkward, he has a zoo in his purse. <laughs> he would just he's walk like, up to me. So and be cute. like, you want to see my Niffler? I do. <laughs> I want to see it so bad. I want to see your Niffler so bad. You also know that he would like would not get the hint. He would actually show you his Niffler. This one's pro. Oh, have you ever seen Dragonheart? <laughs> I feel like I might have. It's Sean familiar. Connery is the dragon, and Dennis Quaid is the broken down knight who has to like connect with the dragon. <laughs> oh my god, I lo- Sean Connery's voice though. So shout out to Sean Connery. R.I.P. Did Sean Connery die this year? I think he did, actually. Okay. Yeah. Or last year. <laughs> it was either last year or this year. Right. Um, and Dennis Quaid, another broken down knight. That's my type. Are you a broken down warrior who's seen better days? Please come Please to my house. Enter my pants. <laughs> also, can we talk about the Tarzan? Like the live action Tarzan? Oh, what's that? What's the actor's name? Alex Skarsgård. Yeah, he was also a very, very naughty vampire in True Blood. Like he's a mean, mean man in that show. Mm. But the things I would let him do to me. Oh my god. Okay, wait. One more from The Walking Dead. The guy with the bat or whatever. He was like in the later season. Uh, uh that actor. I don't know his name. Yeah, he used to be Danny N- Duquette's in Grey's Anatomy. D- Danny Duquette. Yes. Yeah. What is his name? Oh I my gosh. Know. But I. But every time he's in something new, I pour one out and cry for Denny Duquette. <laughs> oh my god, Denny Duquette. He was hot. He was hot he was as hot. shit. I also would throw away my medical uh, career for Denny Duquette. For I would throw True. it right away. Oh, I'll do that. Also, he um, was rich. Yeah, he was rich. Bro. And honestly, that at this point is my only criteria. <laughs> also, he's got like broad shoulders. He's got that shoulder thing going on. And I think that's what attracts me to him. Yes, my sister and I have a saying. Well, my sister will be all like, don't you take credit for this. So my sister loves to tell my brother-in-law, like, I just like men who are broad in the shoulder, who like, should there be a bomb, their body could envelop me Mm, and take the brunt of the bomb. (laughs) Agreed. 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 Okay, Mm -hmm. I feel like we've, we've, we've got so many backups we could keep going. So let's... right. So let's, let's, let's manifest. It let's just reel it in. All right, yeah, we're getting too excited. Ugh, I'm gonna have to do things to myself later. I don't know. What I'm saying. All, right. All right. So my big takeaway: um, I have a thing for broken, selfish men. <laughs> yep. Who will do heroic things despite their better judgment? I like to call this my Han Solo complex. 
I love you, yeah. Harrison Ford. <laughs> I love you. Um, I also have things for guys who will bend gender roles in their clothing. Put on a little guy liner. Yeah. Put it on. Get some glitter on them cheeks. Be Lee Pace on a giant deer in a in a basically a rope dress. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Trying to fight for your bracelet. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I what's that called? Androgyny. Androgynous. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, androgynous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would like to manifest that one of my future partners, because I think this is what it boils down to. I want a man or a partner who is artistic, because I think that's where the, like, bending of the clothing rules and all of that comes in. I just want you to be artsy with me. And I want dudes who can pony up and be adventurous when the day calls for you to be adventurous. I need you to be a little strong. I buy with that. I need you to have some conviction. I need you to yeah. throw yourself on top of me should there be a bomb. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think I'm attracted to toxic men, <laughs> toxic villains, basically. Um, I don't fucking know anymore. Or <laughs> like dudes who have so much testosterone that it's like overwhelming. But basically anybody who... Like, I just want people to choke me in the bedroom. Like, I don't basically want you to make me pass out, essentially. How much do or you want them me. to mean it, though, when they choke you? Because there's, like, fun time choking, and then there's, ooh, I mean it. Like, 50-50 for sure. Like, I kind of want them to hate me a little, basically. But <laughs> uh, that's not... I'm trying to break that, you know? Because that's not real life, and that's not healthy. Um, <laughs> but... I would also, in that same regard, Natalie, I will say that I do, I do, like, I have encountered men in relationships that are scared of being a little more dominant or yeah. being, like, forceful. And, like, if we ask for it and it's consensual, guys, please don't be afraid. Like, this is what safe words are for. And this is what, like, you know, open communication is right. for. If so, I- if I look you in the eye and go, what about a little sword play tonight in the in the bedroom? You take that however you think you need to take that. Listen, I'm so fucked up. Like I wouldn't I would not be opposed to knife play and blood play. Let's go. What the fuck? I just thought that maybe he would reenact a joust in my bedroom. <laughs> Natalie's like, <laughs> I'm over here like let's get some blood going. No, I uh, will just like cut me a little. I know you're not, but I am. But uh anyway, don't be afraid to explore and be adventurous and let's have a but conversation. Consent and open communication and all the lovely, healthy ways to do it. So let's have a conversation. Will you roll around in the dirt and then get into a cage I've constructed? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the same with, like, mechanics, you know what I'm saying? Like, the mechanics, they're all oily and, like, shit, you know, and, you know, they come home and they kind of, they stank a little, but it's, like, a good stank. It's, like, a good stank. I swear, there's some, there is a male entity haunting this home because a couple of days this week, I've smelled man B.O., and, like, of course I smelled myself. And I was like, what the fuck is going on with your home hormones today? <laughs> yeah. Why do I smell like a man? But I didn't. <laughs> but you didn't, yeah. Well, you know what's funny? That's weird that you bring it up because uh, there's been a few times in the past few weeks where I've stepped out on my balcony and it yeah. smells not like B.O., but like cologne. Like, uh. and I'm like, is there a man out here? Like, hello? Um. <laughs> Yesterday, I almost did a ghost check, and then I Uh-oh. bitched out. Um, I had open, I had left a cabinet open while I was yeah. using the restroom, and I almost leaned forward and went, ghost, don't be a bitch ass, and close that. But then I was like, I don't want confirmation. No, yeah, no, 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 no. You leave no. that shit alone, for sure. Uh, we're all just going to live separately in this home, me and the ghost entities. Yeah, yeah. All right. Everybody be cool. Oh, Ghost was another movie that turned me on. Have you seen Ghost with the, like, play? I have not. Okay. That's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic, Dina. All right. All right, plug us. Let's do plugs. 
Make sure to like and subscribe. What if we turn this podcast into a movie review podcast? You won't know <laughs> unless you subscribe. <laughs> That's true. Um, leave us a five star review and then comment what you want us to actually be talking about. Did you sign on today going, why the fuck are they talking about Tim Curry as the devil? I, I've never seen Legend. Feel free to tell us that you love us, but you have some thoughts and suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> and you can follow us, DM us, and interact with us at Men I've Tolerated Pod on Instagram. You can also follow my personal Instagram at NatalieK124. And then there's that blog that I've been writing about my art projects and whatever else I'm inspired by, by at NatalieSinspiration.com. And you can email us questions about your relationships or anything you need advice on at men I've tolerated before at gmail.com. And you can follow me on Instagram as well at ms period caboose. Uh, I'll have links to my Twitch and other things if you want to interact with me as well. Could someone please also make us like a thirst trap fan art collage of all of the men? <laughs> All the men. Oh my god. All the people that that we've listed in this podcast. (laughs) Like, I would so hang that up in my house. Like, 100%. All right. right. Well, that's it. I'm horny. Uh, (laughs) You said you're horny? Yeah. After talking about all these men. Listen, my cramps are gone. So at this point, the day let's can be go. whatever it leads. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's go. There's plenty of time. We're in quarantine. quarantine. Um, <laughs> tolerators, just remember, you don't have to smile through anything that you're tolerating. Smiles are just for joy. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. We're out. We're out. <laughs>